There are those in life that look set up to succeed, practically, socially, culturally, financially. William J. Seymour was not one of those people. In fact, for him, it seemed like the very opposite. Son of a slave, blind in one eye, a young black man living in an intense racist environment, life didn't look like it was in his favor. Yet God used him, and he became one of the most influential African-American Christian leaders of his time, and his impact can still be felt today. Seymour was born on the 2nd of May, 1870, in Louisiana, and his parents, Simon and Phyllis, were both recently freed slaves. Not much is known of his younger years, but later he escaped the harsh prejudice of Louisiana to live in Cincinnati. However, there he suffered a bout of smallpox, and the attack caused him to lose his left eye. Amazingly, his recovery from the potentially fatal illness actually compelled him to become a preacher. He grew an unwavering fascination to experience the Holy Spirit, he was hungry for finding truth and had a passion to share it, both of which fueled his travels to a great number of different cities. Seymour soon had a desire to become a student at a Bible school in Texas and sought to join the classes. But because segregation was still happening, they would not provide him with a seat in the class. Instead, he was only allowed to listen through an open door or window. His attendance did not last very long as he grew sick of the racism he believed that racial integration in worship was the true heart of Christ. However, from the teaching he did here, he realized the power that was the Holy Spirit and what it meant for him. Seymour was led to move to Los Angeles, where he wasted no time in making his presence felt. A kind couple called Mr. and Mrs. Asbury offered to host some gatherings in their home where Seymour could preach and pray. And on April the 9th, 1906, God began doing something in the hearts of people that was wild and real and it continued for three nights. As excitement increased about these events taking place, more and more people came to witness the meetings and the Asbury home quickly became too small to accommodate the services. So Seymour moved the congregation into an unused church building on Azusa Street, which was at the time being used as a warehouse. The congregation made up of people of all races, cleaned out the building and then filled the interior with makeshift furnishings. The pulpit was made of two boxes nailed together, and the seats made from planks nailed to empty barrels. Seymour made his home on the floor above the church and began holding services three times a day, seven days a week. A diverse array of volunteers helped assist the gatherings, black and white, men and women. It gained national attention as the Azusa Street Revival, and was a huge catalyst for the expansion of the Pentecostal movement across the world. The Azusa Street Revival was always filled beyond capacity as it attracted more than a thousand people a day and had a reputation for wild scenes of passion and prayer. People were amazed that Seymour, from his unlikely and humble beginnings, had realized his vision of a completely integrated church community alive with the Spirit of God.